What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the changes that happened inside of Layout in version 2026. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in Layout 2026, there's been a few changes. So first off, you might've noticed that the whole way the Layout looks changed a little bit. And so basically what they did is they went back in and they changed the user interface in order to make it look more like SketchUp. So I will say, at least to me, it's not like significantly substantially different in the sense that you can't figure out how to use it, but it does look a lot more like it has the same user interface, right? So for example, you've got your trays over here. You can click and drag parts and pieces of your trays out, um, and you can kind of create your own trays if you want to do that. Um, so you do have the ability to like redock them and things like that. Um, another nice function is the ability to right click in here and toggle different trays or different, uh, yeah, different individual trays inside of your overall tray on and off right here. So that is definitely something that does make your life a little bit easier, right? You can right click in here and you can just kind of pop up whichever one you want. That's something I might actually use, right? If I have a bunch of these kind of open right here, I can right click in here and I can pick one of them. And so if you right click on one of them that's checked, it's going to minimize it right here. But that just gives you a faster way to access um, these options over here. We also have the ability to pull these down and these look exactly like the tool um, sets from inside of SketchUp itself. So not a massive change, but it does change the look and feel of this a little bit. Um, so probably the biggest thing that you're gonna notice um, is that they've added some new tools in here, which are tools that I think are like very important. So what we've got is we've got some trim and extend functions and also some fillet and chamfer options. And so what the trim and extend is going to do is let's say that I was to come in here and draw a bunch of lines. And by the way, something like this in layout before was kind of painful because what you'd have to do is you'd have to come in here and you'd have to kind of like manually click and drag these in order to trim and extend them and things like that. Well, now we have the ability at the top of the page. Notice how there's an option in the little drop down right here to do either trim with a shift T or extend with a shift E. So if I trim this, notice how I can mouse over the different edges and I can see where they're going to be trimmed. Well, in this case, say I wanted to trim this off on this edge right here, I can see where that's going to trim that off like this. So not only that though, we also have the ability and I'm gonna go ahead and trim a couple of these just so you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, but now we have the ability to extend lines. And so what extend lines is gonna do is it's gonna take an edge and it's going to extend it out until it intersects with something. So if I come in here and do an extend on this line, notice how when I mouse over it, this is going to show me possible extensions to another line inside of the space. So in this case, notice how I can mouse over one side or another, and it's almost like shooting a little laser beam out that like runs into everything else. But if I click in here, it's going to add that extension right here. So this gives me the ability to really quickly kind of like clean up these documents in here, which is something that's been sorely needed inside of layout because creating things like title blocks actually kind of got a little bit frustrating trying to get everything to line up. The trim and extend makes things so much easier. So that is definitely a massive change. We also have the ability now to add um, fillets and chamfers to corners. So the way this works is if you mouse over an object right here and then you click two edges, then you need to type in a radius. So notice how you get a little box that pops up down here. Well, I'm gonna type in a radius of six inches or maybe four inches, maybe two inches. Here we go, it was a little bit too big. So maybe one inch right here, but notice how I can come in here and I can type in sizes of different radiuses like this. It's actually pretty intuitive to use to come in here and add these different radiuses like this. And not only do you have the fillet, you also have the chamfer, which is basically just gonna take these and just add like a bevel right here like this. And so say I wanted this to be a two inch bevel or a one inch bevel right here, that's gonna go ahead and that's gonna automatically add the bevel in here. So those are definitely valuable drafting tools in my opinion and things that have been needed in layout for a while. Now, I'm still waiting for the day when we get the uh, bevel and chamfer function in SketchUp. So that's something that I'm still waiting on and I'm hoping at some point we're actually going to get that. But um, at least having it in layout does make your CAD style editing a lot easier. And so another thing that I'd like to hear your opinion on, because honestly, I, I haven't been able to test it yet. It's just something that I'll probably notice over time. They're supposed to have gone in and improved the rendering code that generates the vector 
line work in here. So what that means is that means that anything, anytime anything is created with either a vector or a hybrid, it should be a lot faster. Um, so from what I'm being told in tests, it's supposed to be significantly faster. But I'd love to hear from you as you're working with Layout 2026. Are you finding it faster, slower, or about the same from the older versions? Okay, so in addition, they've added new scrapbooks inside of layout. So if I, you click the drop down right here, notice how there's a collection of architecture scrapbooks that you can click in here and you can add. And so these are much higher quality assets that you can drag into your scene right here. So I can click and drag this in in order to add things like sofas and things like that. What I'm being told, because this is something that doesn't really like necessarily align with my workflow, maybe the same as it does with a lot of other people, but it sounds like a lot of people use these kind of like two-dimensional scrapbooks in order to create early ideas inside of layout. So you can kind of like move them around really quickly. So I could drag a new sofa in right here if I wanted to do that. But you've got this collection of these new scrapbooks that you can use in order for quick layouts. So things like a king size bed and other things like that. Um, and then you could adjust the scale on these if you wanted them to be larger or smaller. So for example, this is in here with the scale drawing function, right? You can see that. Well, if we go up to the scale drawing option right here and I adjust the scale. So maybe I want it to be a little bit bigger. I could adjust this up to like a quarter inch or a three eighths of an inch scale right here. Notice how that gets you a lot closer to kind of like your real world size of something like a bed. So um, you can use these on more like your blank projects. Like probably I wouldn't use it on this project because I've already added 3D models in SketchUp, but you do have this enlarged library of scrapbook content that you can start using in order for um, you to do kind of like your early ideation and things like that. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below if that's something you're going to use. Um, so the comments I've seen on it so far are actually really positive, but I'd love to hear what you think. Okay. And this next one, I think could be really valuable for people that export to DWG. And I will start by saying I don't really export to DWG. So I'm not really familiar with some of the like pain and suffering associated with this. I think there's been some issues with uh, trying to export things to actual layers inside of AutoCAD and things like that. And so they have added additional options in here for uh, things that you can do when you do page export. So things like, um, things like you can export individual pages as separate DWG files. I think the one that people are probably going to use the most is going to be the export to DWG in preserving tags. So uh, the way that works is if you do an export to DWG, right? So file export and set it as DWG. When you click on save, what that's going to do is that's going to pop up this dialog box right here. That's where you can set the export each page as a separate file. And you can also set it to um, export entities as color by layer. Now, my understanding is if you check this box, it's going to take all of your layers or your uh, tags from SketchUp, and it's going to create them as separate DWG layers inside of AutoCAD. So again, this is not something that I usually do. So I come, I'm kind of relying on your feedback to know, hey, is this something that's really good for you? Do you not really care? Um, so let me know in the comments down below how you feel about these export options. I do know this is a complaint that I've seen in the past is that it doesn't do this very well. So I'd be very interested to see if it's better now um, that they've added these additional options. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about these updates specifically inside of layout? So I just love having that conversation with you guys. I mean, the, the performance improvements are always appreciated. I like the trim and extend, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about these new additions? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.